just a few minutes past the hour of 1 p.m. Uh, good to have your company and thank you so much for choosing the National Broadcaster coming to you live from Broadcast House Nile Avenue. Here to bring you the special edition every Sunday, the weekly news roundup. My name is Sandra Kahunde. Some of the activities you could have missed out and uh, thank you for choosing us once again. Proud to be having you and uh, you being part of our family. Now straight into the updates. President Yuri Museveni has challenged the people of Teso subregion in eastern Uganda to embrace a more commercial farming ventures other than citrus farming. Museveni lists poultry, dairy and fish farming as serious avenues that will drive people, including women, out of poverty. Well, this was during the Women's Day celebrations in Katakui, uh, where the president revealed a new campaign to enforce free education in government schools as an avenue towards consolidating women emancipation. A joyous mood filled with energy engulfed the atmosphere as women celebrated their day in Katakui district. From entertainment to parade march past, women showcased their worth. President Yoweri Kagutam Seveni, who had arrived earlier, was the chief celebrant. He seized the moment to spread the gospel of wealth creation. Ensuring that the families get involved in commercial agriculture with the Chibaro, with the, with the Aymar. With, in artisanship and small scale industries and big industries. In services, services like transport and so on. He listed more commercial farming ventures for Teso people to embrace. Citrus, we are going to add, I, I want to encourage fish farming. So, I took off in Otomaraito, Otomaito Mori, Akuruna, Garia. The people are we are doing well, the man in Anyara was doing well. The man between Amuria and, 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 and Soroti was doing well. The, the, the man north of, of Busia town between Busia and uh, Tororo and Marabo was doing well. But it seemed they did not get enough support of the feeds and all that. Fish feeds. But I'm going to sort that one out. President Museveni decries the practice of bride price payment, describing it as a backward practice that could fuel gender-based violence. The, the, the man who took the, the, the salary of his wife and was consuming all it in drinks, it is because the man has no money of his own. You ask Janet whether, whether I've ever taken her money. If, uh, a man does not take a woman's money if he has got his own money. He revealed a government plan to enforce free education in government schools. There are for you the women movement. If you really want girls to be free, why don't you insist on free education? Have you, done research, have you done research to find out when a family does not have the money to pay school fees, they must choose whether to keep the boy in the school or the girl in the school. Whom do they choose? Have you che checked that to consolidate the emancipation of, of the girl child 
we, in my view, we should insist on free education in government schools. Earlier, women from all walks of life shared strides and challenges experienced in women emancipation movement. Firstly, we also need to close the gaps in education and skilling. The investments made in young people today will be critical to the projection of Uganda's development in the future. We therefore must invest in human capital development, in particular programs that support the re-entry into education. The huge opportunity we have in front of us is the National Development Plan 4 that is currently being developed. And it is so critical because it's the last plan we have before we have to account for the 2030 goals for the SDGs. So we hope that together, in partnership, we can find ways of really accelerating progress. Government, through you, have extended to women of Uganda access to credit through special programs, including the Women Fund, the PDM where we are allocated 30% of the money, and the exclusive one called GROW, which has just commenced. As for the National Council of Women, they want the president to revisit the decision on rationalization of women-related agencies. For example, the proposal to match the councils for women, youth, PW, D, elder persons into one secretariat has legal policy and administrative uh, historical justifications that will weaken the operations and effectiveness of the council. And say, I'm waiting for so and so to give me money, I'm waiting for so and so to give me money, but you can think outside the box, and even with very little money, you can start a business and it can grow. The Women's Day celebration held in Katakui was held under the theme Accelerating Gender Equality Through Women Economic Empowerment. <laughs> Story compiled by Henry Okrut for UBC News. Moving on, Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Kataham Savani, has encouraged women in the country to embrace their purpose and God-given calling. She was grasping the mantle of Deborah Uganda chapter and apostolic and uh, prophetic conference at Kololo. You at the front, Mrs. Mat the mantle of Deborah, an apostolic prophetic conference, is a gathering aimed at uplifting and growing the faith of women to conquer their challenges in this ever-changing environment. It is very clear that nations are coming to our light. It is very clear that kings are coming to the brightness of our rising. Gracing the occasion, the First Lady and Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Kataham Seveni, welcomed the Apostle E.C. Igenegba from Nigeria with her message of transformation to Uganda and referred the women to the teachings of Deborah in the Bible. Deborah's story as presented in Judges chapter 4 and 5 is one that is brief and yet so insightful. It portrays the biblical character Deborah in three formidable roles as a prophetess, as a judge, and a commander-in-chief of Israel's army, a role reserved today for the heads of states of nations. Furthermore, Deborah is the only woman in the Bible who had the great privilege of mirroring the Lord as the judge, as a lawgiver, and king, as described in Isaiah 33, verse 22. It says, For the Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. He will care for us and save us. Unquote. It is worth noting that in every nation, the highest positions of influence fall in these three arms of government. One, the judiciary, two, the legislature, and three, the executive. God chose Deborah, a woman, to embody all three positions, crowning this with her vital function 
as a prophetess speaking on God's behalf to his people. And indeed, through these three roles, she executed with the boldness and excellence, cared for and saved the people of Israel. She urged all women in the country to embrace their purposes and God-given callings. I am glad to know that the mantle of Deborah goes beyond the pulpit to working with communities through the Deborah Impact Project Africa with a vision to, in quotes, elevate the status of African women from merely surviving to flourishing and thriving from their place of purpose. Apostle Isi Igenegba shared her testimonies to uplift and empower women and how to be impactful at places of worship. The weight of the glory of God and the weight of the opinion of God will rest on the inside of you so that everything that Pastor Lab and Pastor Lee and Pastor Ching talk has preached will go beyond a message. It will become a conviction in your spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus. From Kenya, Apostle Lee Wambugu preached transformative messages to the young girls and women in the country to go beyond being wives. Because make no mistake, every time God moves, there is going to be a stillness after. What we have to be left with is what we erected when God moved. Now is the time of empowerment. Now is the time of divine empowerment for you to build something for longevity, something for a legacy. The mantle of Deborah, an apostolic and prophetic conference, attracted several dignitaries from government and over 1,000 women from different places of worship in the country. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. More state activities where we're seeing the Prime Minister Robin Anabanja uh, commissioning Nyamhunguzi Bridge on uh, Kihumbura Road in Kakumiro District. The bridge that connects Kakumiro residents at Mobande and Chiangkwanzi was constructed by the Prime Minister, area leaders and the community itself. Well, during the commissioning on Saturday, the residents commended the Prime Minister for organizing uh, the community and other leaders to construct the bridge. There was excitement in Nyamuhunguza village in Kakumiro district as uh, the Prime Minister commissioned a bridge constructed by her and community members. On behalf of government, the NRM government that knows the problems of the people, I officially commission Nyamuhunguza bridge for God and my country. The bridge that connects Kakumiro to Mobende and Chankwanze districts was among those affected by the heavy rains last year. In a kuzomwe zari nya, umwe zogwa November, umwaka gwe tukubi ya mabega, nkube ya manye, ya musene newe ya tandika, Uganda yona, ya sobo lo kusari waka ama taba, enti indonezigende, ila nafabe Mobende ne Kakumiro wetu wako serebwa. Onale moye, muze yoye, nabanja oye, banange nze sina buwe nsima, the Prime Minister further revealed that the costs by the Ministry of Works officials were so high, but together with the community members, she managed to rescue the situation at 1 billion shillings. Nabanja commended the community and other leaders within the district for contributing towards the construction of the bridge. The construction works were supervised by the existing government engineers and the technical design were supported by the China Communications and Construction Company, CCC, at no cost.
Abantu bano bakolanga boka under the supervision of my bodyguard. He's here. He would stay here. And he knows even these people by name. And also, Nicholas is where? If he's not there, then another bodyguard is called Hassan. He remained home. I think his turn is to be at home. And so, Naba Siri Kale by Nanger Jeva to Yambo Kore Mirim. Zebanabanga Siri Wo, Nga Ono Achquatam. So I want to thank you. Now, Yaku Ebasa. Present at the Bridge Commissioning event were the Executive Director, Uganda National Roads Authority, Alan Kajina, and NRM National Vice for Buganda, Godfrey Chiwanda, among other dignitaries. Right Honorable, Ntukusima Mnongi Tonkaba Yunru, Otukwatsize Mnonga, Mhani Tukora, Ntujirambara Neiwe, Harihemi Rumayi Tukwata Hichizeje, Otukimitsanyechi Rota Mujene Mkore, Ntukamiza Right Honorable Prime Minister. Ngomi Rumoyona, Community members lauded Premier Nabanja, who also doubles as woman member of parliament Kakumiro and welcomed the development in their area, saying it is going to boost business within Mobende and Kakumiro districts. Ndimbakawa parliament, to appropriating a budget buli mwaka. No gendo kula banga dala, e chitongo le chebi engu donga chiri mumabanja, chiri mumabanja. So tuwa manyanti runo royalu wa mnindo tuina kuruwe jalfeka, netuwe kula muomurimo, netuwe ambi wako saba minister, Nabanja Robin. Now taking it to Iganga, where the NRM leaders and supporters in, in the district marked their 38th year in power with a celebration presided over by the National Party Secretary for Mobilization, Rosemary Saninde. Uh, well, during the event uh, held at uh, Iganga district headquarters, uh, leaders emphasized uh, the importance of unity within the party and uh, reaching out to the ele electorate to address challenges first in Busoga sub-region, as uh, Sudat Kai reports. The celebration commenced with a parade of security officers and students welcoming Honorable Rosemary Seninde. Honorable Seninde emphasized consulting with the electorate to address their concerns ahead of 2026 elections, urging party leaders to foster unity. We have been able to listen to these issues and we are going to make sure that we put them on the table so that they can be addressed. And I want to appeal to the people of NRM, to the NRM supporters, if we love our party and we want our party to grow bigger and stronger, we must stop this business of fighting each other because it is not helping the party at all. And it is the reason why usually the opposition is given a chance to go through because we keep on fighting ourselves. She also encouraged party leaders and supporters to register eligible youth starting from the age of 16 for the upcoming 2026 elections. NRM is registering its members and the registration is starting on the 13th up to the 17th. I would like to call upon all of you friends to go and register. We are registering our members from the age of 16. Why? Because by 2026, many of those will be 18 years and they will be of the right age to vote. District NRM chairperson Haj Abbe Kawalubi urged the government to provide alternatives for sugar cane growers akin to what has been done for tea farmers in western Uganda. The tea growers in Ankore sub-region, they have been given alternative to be given money so that they can improve what they are doing now. It's the same thing can be done to the sugar cane growers. Students from various schools added color to the event with traditional dances and poems, creating a vibrant ambience. So that Kaye, UBC News. A team of business associates are from Alma Viva Absolute Digital, an Italian company, is in Uganda seeking partnership with government in the field of business information and digitalization in a bid to widen Uganda's digital network through investment. This was a technical discussion with members from the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology.
When we were launching, the building broke, three classroom broke, that was built by the parents with the support of the Honorable Minister for Information and National Guidance, Honorable Dr. Chris Badiomunsi, for the great support he has been giving this school. Uh, since 2010, he has been supporting this school, and out of his effort, we have been able to build nine classrooms. And uh, I have urged the parents to continue sending their children to school, but also to appreciate that they are part of the running of the school. They should not leave schools uh, to the technical staff and the foundation bodies, but also as parents, they must continue to play their role in order for our schools to grow and prosper. They have many needs, like they need additional computers, which as government, we shall support them. They also need additional structures, and we shall continue to support them. And I'm happy that Chirima Community School is one of the best performing schools in this area of Kanungu. In a bid to reduce the existing gaps in the engineering sector, the 8M Skilling Center has started a two-day skilling program to retool and reskill practicing engineers. The active director of the center, Hans Amwesigwa, says uh, the training is aimed at retooling and reskilling, enhancing and promoting ethics in the engineering professions. While the training was attended by different engineers across the country, both in private sector and the government men as well. Engineers have called upon the government to invest in capacity building and human resource to boost local content. The executive director and director of 8M Skilling Center, Hans Mwesigwa, says the only way local companies can compete and bid against multinational companies is through retooling and reskilling which will enhance capacity building. The component of it is uh, we need um, what to call capacity building. Uh, in that um, we need to train our local contractors to be able to do the bigger projects, not only in human capacity, but in terms of equipment. Okay. The establishment of 8M Skilling Center is one of such organizations aimed at reskilling the already practicing professions. We are excited by the enthusiasm of the trainees. They came from all over Uganda. Some from the courts of the uh, judi uh, uh, courts of judicature, some from national housing, some from uh, some students from many parts of camp of Uganda. Some were architects, some were engineers predominantly, some were quantity surveyors, and uh, some were uh, uh, technicians and technologists. But the gist of the matter is that uh, we have discovered there is a big yearning for skilling and training. The knowledge and the uh, skills they get from universities and those colleges are not adequate for them to uh, work in the industry. So we came up with this initiative to bridge that gap, uh, equip them with the requisite knowledge and skills for them to perform. The two-day event that focused on project management controls of scope, quality, cost, time and resource management so different participants awarded certificates. We engineers must be at the top of the game, ensure that we constantly learn, enhance our skills, be able to, to engage and understand our community challenges and come, back, come, or come up with relevant uh, or effective ways of solving those needs. Sada Mubale, UBC News, Kampada. Well, the Reverend uh, Canon Geoffrey Mwanguzi are uh, serving as the Archdeacon of Undeja Archdeaconry, that is in Luwaro Diocese, employs adolescent girls and women to recognize themselves as invaluable treasures bestowed by God upon the world, deserving protection from exploitation by unscrupulous boys and men.
Reverend Canon Godfrey Mwanguzi delivered this message while serving as both the guest preacher and the guest of honor at the International Women's Day celebrations held at Nali Nyaru Antale Girls Secondary School in Deja Town Council, Luero District. He emphasizes that if girls and women acknowledge their divine role as nurturers of humanity, they would refrain from demeaning and degrading behaviors. Women are mothers. They are our mothers. They really make the world to be what it is. Much as children come from men, but the women keep the children. And through their activities, they raise these children and give birth to the, to, to the world. That is important to recognize that role of mothers as mothers. Lydia Watulo, the head teacher of Nali Nyalu and Tare Girls Secondary School, highlights the evolving perspective in Uganda's education, where girls are no longer solely groomed for marriage, but are empowered to excel in various fields traditionally dominated by men. The girls of today are not the, like the girls of yesterday. Today, a girl must plan for herself, must be focused, must, be, uh, must plan to help, if in case she's get married, to help her future husband. Because the only way she can do that is by being prepared, just the way, the way boys get prepared for the future. We have stopped training girls to be good wives. We have trained girls to be responsible women, to be responsible mothers, to be people who can add value to their families where they will go or to themselves in the future. During the event, outstanding teachers and departments at the school were rewarded with cash prize. Meanwhile, Hendeje Senior Secondary School organized the dance and drama competitions at their sports ground in Deje Town Council to commemorate International Women's Day, hosted by the Ndeje SS Women's of Purpose Club Senior Six Students, emerged victorious with 818 points, followed by Senior Four with 840 points. Other classes also participated and received recognition for their efforts. Marion Mwanguzi, the patron of the Ndeje SSS Women's of Purpose Club, underscores the club's mission to mentor young girls into purposeful and vicious women. These girls keep themselves uh, until they get married. They are the girls that are uh, uh, not spoil their bodies or uh, get disturbed by others. Others like boys to spoil their, their, their goal. So they are the girls that look after themselves and look forward to see that they achieve their goals. Lead adjudicator Dina Sekabira advises club members to dedicate more time to club activities in the future, ensuring their holistic development. All participants were duly awarded prizes, marking the successful conclusion of the event. I so just encourage the organizers to let us invest more time into the set piece. Otherwise, thank you so, so much, the Ndeje community. There is a lot that you're investing in our girls, and that is why what they are when we meet them out there. This mantle school. I appreciate you because you made my girl and she's excelling somewhere. Relatedly from the field of education, directors of schools, students and parents are joyously celebrating the outstanding performance of students in their schools following the recent release of last year's UNEB USC exams. Nationally, over 80,000 candidates have qualified for university admission, a cause for jubilation. Within Luero district institutions such as Katikamu, SDASS, Luero SS, Ndeje SSS, Bugema Adventist SS and Wakatai SS have predominantly elevated the district's reputation at Luero SS situated in Luero Town Council along the Kampala Gulu Highway. Deputy Head Teacher Academics Chironde Grace and Namubiru proudly notes the exceptional performance in science subjects. It's really an encouraging performance. And we thank God, the teachers, the board of governors and people that supported us in all ways. Uh, we thank the students and even the parents who paid fees to enable those students to in school. Dayo Paul, the headmaster of Katikamu SDASS in Wobulenzi Town Council, 
shares that over 80% of the 200 students who sat for UNEB, USCE exams at their school obtained the necessary principal passes for university admission, with many qualifying for government sponsorship. We want to thank God for the performance of last year, 2023, has been so good. We were able to post uh, a very good result and we feel this is good for our learners and we are seeing our glory getting back to where it has been. Meanwhile, Lydia Watulo, the head teacher of Nali Nyalwantale Girls SS, reports that all 24 candidates from her school performed commendably paving their way to higher education. In our USC results, a good number. We had 24 in, uh, candidates and a good number have qualified for university. Among the successful graduates, Mutebi Donald from Katikamu SDASS, who achieved 20 points in the PMTD combination, expresses the aspiration to pursue civil engineering. Yes, I feel so happy. I'm so grateful to the Lord, my teachers. I want to thank my parents, everyone who has been at my back. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Hoima City, there was jubilations at Mandela SS as teachers and students celebrated the good performance of their former A-level candidates for 2023. Our learners are encouraged to put in more efforts. Uh, we do a lot of testing to make sure that we improve their performance across the board. So challenges have been there in terms of performance, but we have done a lot of practice so that at the end of the day, we present the best students in this country. Six students passed with 20 points to join public universities on government sponsorship. 11 others got 19 points, 7 got 8 points, while others passed with 17, 16 and 15 points respectively. <laughs> Administrators attributed their school success to effective collaborations with their governing councils and increased government support, including the posting of including the posting of additional teachers to enhance teaching and learning environments. I am so glad. I am also so speechless because the happiness is just too much. But I want to start by thanking everybody for being around and for the vibe. Well, beneficiaries of technical vocational education training have been urged to make use of the skills they have attained. Uh, while this was retaliated by stakeholders implementing a refuge response in Palorinia Refuge Settlement and, and Obongi District are doing the graduation of refugees and host communities in various hands-on skills funded by the Norwegian government through Peace Project. As the three-year program for education, advocacy, counseling and empowerment, Peace Project comes to the end, beneficiaries in technical and vocation education trainings by partners have been tasked to make use of their knowledge and the startup kits they have got. Leaders have attributed inactivity among such beneficiaries to lessons among refugees and members of the host community in Palorinia settlement who have undergone such skills training. So when you get a startup, please don't go to drink the startup they are giving you. Go and use it meaningfully. According to Obonji District Resident Commissioner Samuel Hashaka, many youths and women have decided to render their expertise useless by not practicing what they have learned. These are actually job creators and uh, I'm a testimony of this. About a month ago, my car broke down and I was now thinking of Isuzu because it could not be worked on in Obongi, in Germany, Moyo. Uh, a young man comes and uh, he asks what's the problem. So the young man tells me he has undergone skills training. The boy rushed, broke, uh, brought a toolbox, removed the tools, went under the car, fixed the tie rod end, fixed the tire, and there I was. Work that I thought would take me up to Kampala was fixed in Obongi. 
With funding from Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Norway, Strom Foundation implemented the program with a consortium of partners, including Rural Initiative for Community Empowerment, Rice West Nile, and Bugema University that provided the trainings. Rice West Nile did train a hundred youth from the refugee community of uh, Valoria. They are therefore exposed to what we call a market study, and the market study findings present them with what is viable within Obongi district and Palorina refugee settlement. We conclude the peace project this March 2024, and I'm proud and confident to say that uh, in these three years, we have been able, together with the partners that Stromy Foundation has worked with, to achieve what we had intended to achieve. This week, a total of 244 refugees and host communities in Palorinha settlement graduated in hands-on training in phone repair, building and concrete practice, bakery, soap making, motorcycle repair and hairdressing, among others. For me, right now, I can able to plan hairs. One, I will buy soap. Then the other one, I will buy food for my children. The area that I have gone through in is a bakery. After completing the three months practical, I started my own business and I'm getting some money. It is really a marketable one so that I can be able to help my mother in the family in, in terms of building houses. The peace project that started in 2021 targeted refugees and members of the host community between the ages of 20 and 30 years. I'm Navka Farida and Joseph Odama. Now bringing you updates from Moroto, where Uganda Communications Commission, UCC, has trained 35 filmmakers from the four sub-regions of northern Uganda and awarded the best with cash prizes between 1.5 million and 2.5 million Uganda shillings, plus a training offer at Sign Art Academy. The ceremony in Moroto district was officiated by State Minister for Minerals, Peter Lokaris, and uh, was attended by Moroto RDC, George William Wapua, Moroto District Chairperson David Koryang, officials from UCC and the film industry, among others. Filmmakers from Karamoja, Acholi, Nango, and West Nile regions have gathered in Moroto District for the Northern Uganda Film Festival. The Regional Film Festival competition was started last year by Uganda Communications Commission with the aim to foster development of film industry at grassroots level. Julian Mohire is Director, Industry Affairs and Content Development at Uganda Communications Commission. We immediately realize that we have observed enormous benefits to the creative industry, including quality content, job creation, and attracting a lot of audiences to our local films. As such, the regional film competition has been introduced to bring similar benefits to the local creative industry at the regional levels. 35 filmmakers from Northern Uganda were trained in different filmmaking techniques like cinematography, script writing and directing, among others. The ceremony was officiated by State Minister for Minerals, Peter Lokeris. Ensuring that it remains a beacon of creativity and innovation for generations to come. Lokeris advised participants to use film to transform their lives. We move together and popularize this film industry and to say you are being captured is going to make money once people admire the performance. Winners of Best Female Filmmaker, Best Community Impact Story, Best Smartphone Short Film and Best Film were awarded with cash plus a training offer in filmmaking. Everyone was a little bit lighter and I was like the darkest girl in school but guys kept on telling me about my color, criticizing me about my color and I had to embrace my color because I love black girls and black girls rock. I remember there's a statement in there. So I just want 
I just wanted to add other people with the same thing and going through the same thing, being criticized about their color, you're too dark or you're too these. No, I had to accept myself the way I am. And I wrote just something to tell people that, you know what, I'm actually proud of my color and I'm actually proud of who I am. So that is what inspired me. Telling stories with Robert Uganda. As those years during the war, we would have uh, journalists coming you know, all over from uh, BBC, CNN, come and interview with Ugandans, like Northern Ugandan, and they go away with the story. Yeah. So when, when, when I won my first award in 2014, I was like, okay, maybe I can tell my story better than those guys. Yeah? And then if, if I tell them, I can still show them. Uh, in my community where I come from, in Bulu, yeah. So that that inspired me. For the longest period of time, I, you know, we have been uh, advocating to UCC to consider what we call last mile filmmakers, so like the the, the filmmakers in other rich areas, like we are here in in Morocco today, so that they, they encourage them and they help them to make films and great content that are going to diversify, going to come up together. Similar competitions are expected to be held in the coming days in eastern, central and western regions of the country. I'm Navka Farida and Morinig. In more updates, a team of business associates from Almiviva, Absolute Digital, an Italian company, is in Uganda seeking partnership with government in the field of business, information, and digitalization in a bid to widen Uganda's uh, digital network through investment. Uh, this was a technical, the, the, there was a technical discussion with members from the Ministry of Information, Communication, and Technology. Recently, Alma Viva Group representatives visited Uganda on a business trip and held discussions with Uganda's Prime Minister Robin Anabanjia with an agenda of enhancing Uganda's digital transformation process and strengthen ties between Italy and Uganda. The team has returned to Uganda and met a technical team from the Ministry of ICT to spread the same forum of investing in Uganda's information and digital network. A specialized company uh, on the on the on the technology, on the research and development. There are 400 people there. We will see later that are specialized in artificial intelligence, data management, um, BI, all these sort of technology representing the data, attacking the most important information for the data. Many opportunities where uh, uh, the government can maybe get, uh, get uh, services, where our private sector can cooperate with the Arm, Arm, uh, Arm Viva. So we'll definitely get back to you on um, the strategic areas that we feel we can start with and the low-hanging fruit. Speaking at the meeting, UBC's managing director Wilson Agaba welcomed the idea, saying it would improve the national broadcaster's data management for systematic operation. So as UBC, we are looking at how we can benefit from the expertise they have in terms of uh, not only just archiving our material, but also they have a very robust uh, customer, customer-centered technology where we can get feedback, where we can um, where we can learn much more what the customer wants and what they appreciate. The collaboration will also contribute to Uganda's GDP since it focuses on different sectors. As an investors in uh, several sectors, the main sector of interest are agri-industry, infrastructure, construction, railways digitalization and uh, also the uh, manufacturing as a whole. Almaviva's general manager Vincenzo Blois is optimistic that partnership will give room for Uganda's digital economic transformation. Uh, the main things that uh, uh, can, uh, can benefit Uganda from that is I think a, a very uh, very fast grow up, grow, grow up in, uh, in know-how in know-how in services because we can breed knowledge, know-how and that. And obviously working here with the Uganda partners, we can benefit of your uh, young population, your young skilled population, uh, your ability to work on the IT service. I'm Ivan Juko for UBC. Fred! Oh, 
Freddy, Freddy! <laughs> Fred Dola, my boss, CEO of Inojo, the general of generals, the conqueror of conquerors, the first and the final, the sky above the skies, the promised land, the terms and the conditions, the international king crocodile, the source of the source What's of the Nile. I don't have money today. <laughs> Just take a polite loan of 200 you to stock on my shop. The signs and symptoms of success. The banker commander, not the banker tailor. Why hassle for a loan when you've got MTN Momo? We're so tingy. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 5 hash for all quick loans. Choose from the different loan options from our partners and get one that works for you. Together, we're unstoppable. Nyati Motion Pictures brings you to Copa Moja Ankole segment. Learn about the fabrication of Ankole Kingdom from Nkore, the beautiful village of milk and honey at the detriment of Mpororo states. Ankole as a kingdom came about in 1901. Ankole is a colonial fabrication. And all these so small kingdoms were counties of the original Itara. Ruhinda. Ruanjunachi, who was in Trezi. The son of Wamara Ranjanji And that starts the rulers of Ankole called Vahinda. Who are the pre colonial heroes from Ankole? Is it Rutaraka, Muguta? Is it Intare, Kitabanyoro? Find out from Tuko Pamoja. Daily screenings at Ham Cinemax in Wandegea at 11.30, 2 p.m., 4.30, and 7 p.m. To get a ticket, call 0778-787-660. Tuko Pamoja? To know you're still watching and following, now straight into business, uh, where smartphone users are to receive maintenance and repair services at a moderate and cost-effective arrangement. Uh, this has been revealed by the general manager, Calcare Uganda, James Okiria, at the launch of the after-sale technical support campaign for smartphones and accessories in Kampala. The growing trends and advancements in technology have seen the world shift from use of traditional gadgets and modes of transmitting information. Evident from the number of smartphone users who find it convenient to access anything from the palm of their hands. According to a survey conducted in 2022, the number of smartphones registered in Uganda grew steadily quarter on quarter, growing from 4.6 million in the first quarter of 2018 to over 12 million by the fourth quarter of 2022. Smartphone users in Uganda range in age, with 76% of them falling into the 25 to 34 age group. Despite the freedom given by Uganda Communication Commission and telecommunication companies to Ugandans to enjoy modern technology, particularly the use of smartphones, many users of these gadgets find hurdles in fixing and repairing them when they break down. This has prompted Calcare Uganda to provide official after-sales technical support for smartphone products at the market. Imagine a scenario where you have a damaged phone and you're frustrated about going to the right place uh, to have it fixed. This is where we as Calcare come in to give you a reliable and secure services. Customer comes to our service center for repair. They are guaranteed one of quality and reliability of our services. Yes, another thing about our services is our services are affordable and those who have recently purchased their devices and their devices still are still under the warranty cover are guaranteed of free services for anything that is operated on their phone. Calcare management looks forward to extending a wide bunch of support to cater to problems faced by their clients at a cost-effective plan. Mr. James Okirol assures customers of genuine service delivery. Linking together, you have also in the hard part of it, software and uh, hardware at this side of Calcare. Nekesa Martha Irene, the authorized services center supervisor, Lady Calcare Uganda's commitment to enhancement of customer satisfaction and loyalty, offering skills to Ugandans through training. Recently, we recruited some students from Nakawa Vocational Training Institute. Uh, given the fact that uh, they have a background of uh, technical skills, we recruited them uh, and put them on board on our team. Sila miu kuzaya bana masomero. Tebi te kwa kuka rubi ni zana katono. Enokusimba nyiri rimpa mvu. Kenokaripa kenokabiduka. 
Sibuye kuzunga na banka silipsi? Ah, ah. Kati osumuro kusasula school fees zo mwana wo. Atena okola na ebila rantoko. Kusimuye yomu ngalo. Ichukula changu nyo. Nyiga unyizi sita. Emu mkaga tanu. Sita. Munana not hash. Huko berelebi kula giridua. Hubu kuzise apu ya MTN momo. Hati kati okula churu aliru. MTN mobile mana Uganda limited. Erunga misipa banka nkuruwe ya Uganda. A few minutes to top of the hour before we let you go enjoy your afternoon and look at sports where the Uganda Bridge Federation has intensified its campaign to teach the sport across the country. One of Uganda's newest sports federations, the Uganda Bridge Federation, has continued to spread the sport across the country with emphasis on universities through outreaches. Bridge, 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 first of all, it's uh, an intellectual game uh, played by uh, four people in a partnership format. Uh, bridge is uh, actually the best card game you'll ever play in this world. Uh, it's played on, it, on, a, on, on a square table with four people and uh, the aim of the, of the game is to win tricks. Uh, but before you even win tricks, you have to go through what we call a, a, a vigorous process called uh, the bidding process. Uh, those who, who know auctioning, who know bidding, this is a game for you. So when you are able to, 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 uh, to have the right bid, the right communication with your partner, then you can be able to you can be able to watch to go on and play the game. Uh, of course, the game of bridge is a uh, we use a, a, a deck of cards. These are 52 in number, and uh, the, 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 the entire set is served out among the four players, meaning each player gets 13 cards. The latest outreach at Islamic University in Uganda, Kaboja campus, has attracted more than 50 participants from eight universities. Today we have uh, we are, yeah, we, are, we are trying to prepare the different uh, universities for the FISU Mind Sports Championship, which is scheduled to take place later on this year in uh, June. Uh, so uh, we are holding uh, several number of, of uh, uh, tours, what we call bridge tours, where we are going to be able to, uh, to, to, to get the best players representing Uganda at the FISU Mind Sports Championship for university students. So today basically we are here to try to set off our circuits Today we are at IUIU, Kaboja, and uh, we plan to be at uh, Chambogo, Mobs, and later on Makerere for the climax of the bridge qualifiers. In less than a year of its existence, the Uganda Bridge Federation has been established in 10 universities including Nkumba, Busitema, Ndeje, and Makerere. Thank you so much for watching. More news uh, later on in the Timely News Hours. Keep watching the National Broadcaster from the entire team behind the scene. My name is Sandra Kahunde. We wish you a good day and, of course, a great week ahead. A great programs lined up for you as you enjoy your afternoon. Thank you once again for watching. God bless you. BC, inspiring Uganda.